So, so today I invited Justin in because, you know, this market with the COVID-19, the coronavirus is changing on a daily basis. And having access to people who are in the game every single day, playing the game every single day, seeing the changes that happen every single day is so valuable. Uh, there's a lot of people in real estate, um, some are more active than others. And I like to uh, personally get some opinions from people that are super active like Justin because you can see literally what's happening from a day-to-day -day basis versus someone who might dab on this on the weekends or something right. like that. So we're going to dive into this show. I'm really excited because I love tapping into smart people's knowledge. So Justin, thanks for being here. You bet it. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's dive into this, you know, just talking about the market. Um, I've seen some changes from, our, uh, from, from week to week pretty consistently, almost day to day. What kind of changes are you seeing right now in the market that might be different that are changing for, let's just say, listings and buyers, however you want to break that down first? Sure, and maybe I should share some of my perspective so you know, you know where I'm coming from. So we manage a bunch of properties for owners, for myself, so I'm an investor. Um, I do some short-term flipping, I do um, some retail sales as a realtor, I've got a team, so we're, we're actively helping buyers and sellers, we're doing some commercial stuff, a little bit of development, you know, some multifamily, yeah. so I have some entrepreneurial as well, so I, I have a different, different uh, wide-ranging opinion on some things. So when you ask me what am I seeing in the market, I'm seeing a lot of stuff, right? We're seeing a lot of fear, uh, caution. We're seeing people hold back, people take their properties off the market, people are just deciding to wait it out. You know, it, yeah. it's absolutely crazy, right? What do you think is the reason people are taking their house off the market for? Like, I could see buyers dropping out of the market because they just got laid off or they just lost their job because of COVID-19. Why do you think sellers are taking their house off the market? Well, think, if you're high risk, if you've got an autoimmune, an autoimmune disease, if you're oh, high sure. risk or older, you don't want people in your home, you yeah. don't want to have an open house, people shuffling through the, we don't even know fully how this disease is transferred, right? Is right. it airborne, we start to see mass. Right. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why people are having fears, and I, and I would say they're valid, right? Like, Absolutely. Like, fear is fear, so right? So unknown. And we don't know what's gonna happen, but we are seeing a, a pandemic here. Exactly, yeah, no, I totally agree. They say anything in general uh, that's unknown creates fear. You know? Absolutely. So if you've never jumped out of a plane, there's probably a little more fear than someone who does it all the time, because they know. So yeah, this is definitely created <laughs> for sure fear. But, but even when you're going to jump out of that plane, there's still a little bit unknown. Is my shoe going to <laughs> yes, open, right? That's right. That's right. That's true. Have you ever jumped out of a plane? I've done it twice, yeah. Yeah? That's, that's awesome. It's all right. <laughs> my, my wife actually surprised me and took me up uh, for the second time. We did it on my 40th birthday, so that was pretty cool. That is pretty yeah. cool. Wow. Yeah. And then your first time? Uh, we did it in Canada in college. So really? Cool. Yeah. That is really Static cool. Static line jump where you don't need somebody on your back. It was pretty crazy. So actually that brings up a quick story, right? Yeah. <laughs> they give you like maybe five or six hours of training how to jump out of the airplane and how to turn the chute and how to land. Yes. So they have you on this radio. There's a guy on the ground and he's, you know, my number was like three. Yeah. So he's like, number one, turn. Number two, turn to the left. Land. Well, the radio went dead when he's like telling me how to land. And so I was just going back to this brief few hours of training. <laughs> tugging left, tugging right, trying to land into the wind. I landed like three fields over, but it was okay. That's amazing. <laughs> the unknown, right? The unknown. That's where we're at right now That's with this right. pandemic. That's, That's right. where you were with the, with the jump. That's incredible. So wait, um, you, didn't, you weren't tied to anyone on your very first jump in your life? Correct. I didn't know that was even possible. They call it a static line jump. Maybe, maybe that's why we did it in Canada. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. Wow, very, very courageous. <laughs> so, so you bring up though. You, we bring up uncertainty, right? Absolutely. Like this is one thing I've learned about myself in the last few years. Yeah. I am okay with uncertainty. I actually thrive in uncertainty. Nice. So I'll give you an example how I know this. Okay. Um, last year, I started to learn this, you know, about myself a few years ago. Last year, we went to Europe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
I went a week before my wife, right? Okay. So I did some training over there with a buddy. Yep. Um, some self development, and then she was flying in. We were going to spend two weeks touring around. So we're in Netherlands, and we were planning on going to France. We didn't know in between. Uh huh. The day she's flying in. Yeah. I was like. Oh, we don't have any plans. Yeah. All we know is when we're flying out of Paris. Right. And I was like struggling to get a hotel. And yeah. we would just plan a couple of days in advance. So I was good with uncertainty, just yeah. figuring it out as we went. And That's it was great. a great trip. It was a great experience. That's fantastic. That's awesome. And that was Tony Robbins, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, yep. that was amazing. Yeah. I heard awesome. that, that event was fantastic. Very cool. Okay, so thank you for sharing that. Um, so we're seeing that with list, listings uh, kind of coming off the market, uncertainty, they don't want a lot of people coming through home. How about buyers? I've seen a lot of buyers follow the market just because in a, in, a, in a day, within an instant, people that qualified for a loan all of a sudden don't qualify anymore. So I think what's interesting about this is, and what's hard for me to understand about the media is all they're talking about is negative and it's a lot of political. Yeah. Well, they're not talking about the mortgage issues we're running into, right? Right. Like, there's right. some illiquidity issues with uh, Ginnie Mae and FHA and what it's doing is it's actually going to hurt our market yes. as far as real estate as a country yes. more than anything else in my opinion and nobody's really talking about it. It's true. You hear a little bit about it but basically and I'll put it in a nutshell is you could probably get a loan down to a 580 score, right? Yeah. A little bit higher debt to income ratios, and now those have moved up to yeah. 620. You've got lender overlays maybe to 660. Yes. So if you don't have better credit, what are you going to be? You're going to be a renter for a while. Right. So, you know, and, and there's some other significances to it, right? Yep. Um, you look at the Federal Reserve. They've done, you know, what they call quantitative easing, easing, mm -hmm. and they've tried to buy bonds and they've tried to issue lower rates, right? That's yep. supposed to spark lending, right? And yep. get us back to work. Well, we really can't work. Right. right. Exactly. The mortgage industry is flooded. Yeah. Servicers, the one you make your payment to, they may not be the investor. They're the they're the servicer. They receive your payment, pass it on to the investor. Right. Well, their payback period is about a three years for them to profit. Wow. So these lower rates are causing people to refinance faster. They're losing money, yes. which is causing stress. So I'll, I'll put it in a nutshell. We have a buyer yesterday. We go under contract for. He's a veteran. Okay. Great guy. We owned a contract at 590000 And the reality is when we go to lock his loan, uh -huh. which rates were excellent yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. The rate sheet is crazy. It, they charge, they're charging him three and a half points to lock his loan. Wow. So let me help you understand that. And it doesn't matter whether he's getting three and a quarter rate yeah. or 4%. Wow. It's all the same. Yeah. So can you imagine having to buy a home and it costs you over $20,000? Gosh, to I'm close kidding. on it, right? Seriously. It's ridiculous. And so, you know, really they shouldn't, the, the Federal Reserve, the government has really got to figure out how we can help these loans because. The non-QIM, the self-employed, the jumbo borrower, if you don't have perfect credit, you're not getting a loan. Yeah. On, you know, above 600000 in Salt Lake yeah. County. So yeah. all this is causing stress. It's squeezing the first-time home buyer. It's squeezing, you know, the bigger, the bigger player. I mean, everybody's getting hit, and um, it's going to affect us all for sure. I absolutely agree. Absolutely. That's great information, Justin. Thanks. Um, what about, so... Talk about, if you don't mind, with the, with so many less qualified buyers right now, what does that mean to sellers? And do you think because we have less buyers that prices may even plateau or maybe even start to go down now? You're asking me to pull out my crystal ball. Yes, please. And, <laughs> you know, I'd love to uh, tell you exactly what I think. And, and anybody that can give you some, you know, exact estimations, I think... You just can't trust that person. Right. I think I'm preparing for the worst. And so I'm probably preparing for a 5% reduction. Okay. I don't know if that's possible because I still look at our Utah market when we go back to work and hopefully that's next month. <laughs> yeah, and seriously. Maybe we're back in June. But let's talk about the market for a second because I don't think we're just going to turn it back on and everybody's going to start going out to eat. Right. And everybody's not going to want to go to, you know, let's say the NBA's back in. Do you think yeah. you're going to want to go to a stadium and be with 20,000 other people? Right. And be shoulder to shoulder in the hall? Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. And you may not want to be in a movie theater with 250 people. Yeah. 
So there's going to be some repercussions. We're definitely going to be in a recession, and it's not just going to turn on like that. Right. And so I I know big developers. I know some big business owners, and there's some really large concerns out there. And so, you know, when we start talking about, sorry, what was your question again? Yes. Um, now that you work from home, no I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, with qualified buyers dropping, with less people being able to afford a home, that's less competition um, out there. Do you think sellers are now that there's less people bidding on their houses, going to be uh, prices going to be plateauing or even dropping to be competitive so they can, you know, because if I'm a seller, just diving into this, the reason why I'm asking this question is if I'm a seller right now, knowing what I know. Things could get worse, so I want to get. I want to liquidate my property quick. I don't want to have this next month to see what if prices go down next month. Right. Um, I've already seen price drops happening personally on on the MLS and uh, being, just being in this day to day. So I'm wondering if you feel that that might be the beginning of a price deduction trend. Well, there's two things at play here. Mm -hmm. So we don't know stats till they're kind of past us, right? Right. Like we don't know we're in a recession till we've got two quarters of GDP. Exactly. You know. Yeah. We know when the market's off, we're going to be in a recession, right? Right. So it's hard to say because you've got the 80-20 rule, where 20% of the agents do 80% of the work, and that happens in any industry, right? Absolutely. So you wonder, looking on the MLS, is it an agent that's in the know, that's right. really well priced it, or did they price it because they only did six deals over the last year, and they're like, well, this is what it was last time I closed one. Right. Let's price it aggressively. Right, right. I always feel like, it's been this way the last four or five years, you can underprice a property, the buyer will determine the value and the price of it, and they'll bid the price up right, right to the right. true market value. Right. And hopefully, we try to do that with multiple offers, right? Yeah, yeah. As a, as a listing side of things, but um, if you overprice it and you're not getting the action, you're not getting the showings, you're not getting offered. That's the feedback you need to change. Yes. And some of these agents or some of these owners that know more than the agent, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> You know, they're reluctant. Hey, this is my baby. This is where I lived for 10 years. And, yeah. You know, I put this railing in and I've loved this thing to death and it's yes. worth what I say it is. Yeah. And it's not the case, right? right. It's not checkbook value. It's not blue bed value. It's checkbook value, right? Right. What is exactly. willing to pay? Yeah. And so uh, I was on a call yesterday with a really, really knowing consultant and he said, uh, if you're going to sell in the next year and you need liquidity, sell it today, it's probably going to be worth more today than it will be next year. And I really believe that. I do too. Yeah. Very cool. Um, yeah, dive, if you don't mind, I was on the latter half of that call. Um, I still have to listen to the beginning because I missed it due to another obligation. Sure. Um, that gentleman that you're referring to that was on the call is hired, if we could take this a step further, I, I know he's like, an economist that's hired by major corporations like Home Depot to provide data to these massive companies so that they can get data to basically make decisions. You know, he's not predicting the future, right. but he's providing a lot of data on what's happening right now so these major companies like Home Depot can make decisions based off of right now to, to prepare. Yeah, for the he future. advises REITs, yes. you know, how to invest their money, what they're seeing, uh, large. Funds, yeah, very large funds. Yes, his massive company too. That basically all the employees. That's what they do all day is research yeah. the market, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I just wanted people to know that this call that you were on was from somebody because well, I was on the call too. Well, what's interesting, and we can touch on that, is like we look at stats, right? Yeah. I mean, we get stats in our email, or we can pull stats, but they're off often two, three months old, right? Before right. Before can really quantify them. Yeah. I'm going off what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling. Yes. Right? Because yes. My foot is either on the gas or it's on the pedal. Right. And two weeks ago, we're getting multiple offers. Yeah. Our showings are way up. In yeah. the last two weeks, I'm not getting any multiple offers, and they're well priced homes. Right. Really, I would say superior conditioned homes. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a, definitely a change happening in the market. And I do think this once. Um, once whatever's happening in the market kind of goes back to we're open for businesses and economy, yeah, I think we're going to see a rush. We're going to see this pent up demand that's been waiting. Yes, they're going to go out. But what is the opportunity now? I've got buyers that uh, are probably fear laden, right? Yeah, they're, they're holding up, saying we're going to wait till this is over and then we'll get we'll we'll throw our hat back in the ring. Right? Yeah, yeah. 
Well, the reality is we have to look for opportunities. Yeah. So if we've all had buyers, right, that oh, are yeah. competing five, six offers yes. and can't get it selected. Yep. Well, right now is an opportunity where you don't have multiple offers, but rates are still excellent. Go do it now, right? I agree. And some agents don't want to do it, right? Yeah. Maybe you need to get a new agent. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've literally have, I'm working with uh, some clients right now. For the last, I don't know, four weeks, we've submitted, I don't know how many offers that we've got outbid. Last week, we submitted an offer and there was no other offer on the table except for ours. So we're actually countering back and forth because we're like, well, if there's no competition, we might as well go for something you know, better than asking price. Be aggressive. Yeah, yeah. So it's a really interesting time to be a buyer, like yeah. you are just kind of saying.